When you first saw a push button phone, you may have felt like Star Trek was finally becoming reality. And when it was your turn to press those little rubber keys and hear those touch tones, you knew it couldn't get better than that. You've entered the Gen Experience. I'm Victor, and as everyday items got leveled up, we were always astounded. With what seemed like years between one technological upgrade to the next, we had plenty of time to enjoy the newest evolution before the next advancement arrived. Here's Iron Man to make a little more sense of that. Technology. It's advancing faster and taking less time to be widely adopted than ever before. Like, as in it took roughly 10,000 years to go from writing to printing press, but only about 500 more to get the email. Now it seems we're at the dawn of a new age. But whoa, we're getting ahead of ourselves. That is now. This was then. Here are five awesome things Gen Xers thought couldn't get better. Vinyl was everything. Perusing music stores was an afternoon outing. Discovering music was a way of life for so many people, and although the sound is irreplaceable, vinyl as a media was highly impractical on the move. Sure, you had your eight tracks in the car, but they were just not that convenient, and they had a very short lifespan due to the arrival of the tape cassette. Tape was the name of the game and spread like wildfire. Small cassettes that fit into a deck either on your home stereo or in the new car feature under the radio in the dashboard. Tapes could be rewound and fast forwarded to your favorite song. And just by playing the B side, the A side would rewind on its own and you could jam all over again. It was too good to be true. Compact and convenient music at our fingertips. We still played vinyl on our hi-fi at home. There was always room for high fidelity radio and LP play. And you might even get a new stereo with tape cassette deck included. But that was at home, in your room with your friends or in the basement with, well, whatever you needed to listen to your music with. But we wanted to take it with us, and the tape cassette in its little plastic case was perfect. So perfect, so popular in fact, one of the most famous Transformers was modeled after one. Now that's progress. That seals your place in pop culture iconography. Maybe a shrunken version of a record, we still got the album artwork on the covers of the tape. Even an insert folded into the case had interesting content to peruse, perhaps additional photos, or better yet, the lyrics. I lived to unfold the lyrics in my cassettes. Without them, I sang everything wrong. What about you? Cassettes debuted in the late 70s and wiped out 8-tracks by 1982. Vinyl remained popular during this time, and although the CD would overtake LPs first, they wouldn't finally take the place of the cassette until 1991. Until then, they seemed like the way of the future. How could it get better, right? The cassettes didn't go through any changes, but the way we listened to it did. The Sony Walkman was a gift from God. Getting lost in your jams, working out, walking to work, even roller skating. The Walkman let us carry the music, focus on the artist, their sounds, and gave us each a soundtrack to our lives. However, if you were more inclined to share your tunes with the unsuspecting public, there was the portable stereo. We were bringing music with us in boom boxes everywhere, various sizes, and no matter the weight, we carried those babies on our shoulders to showcase clout, to display our individuality and annoy the fuck out of everybody. The tape deck, often dual, was a perfect addition to the boom box and kept us jamming with friends outside, and when necessary, could provide an impromptu breakdance battle, as long as someone provided the cardboard dance floor. We can't forget what else these cassettes brought us. Blanks easily recordable blank tapes. The thought of recording your own record was insane, but with tapes. Let's record other tapes. Record from the radio, or record ourselves with a separate microphone, not included. The mixtape was not a fad, it was a way of life, a gift from the wonder of the tape cassette and has already gone down in pop culture history. Oh, what possibly could the future hold in store after the cassette? Cassettes were big business, but not just in music, in video. They got a little bigger when it came to recording and playback of your favorite shows and movies. The VCR, a video cassette recorder, became popular in the early mid-80s. I'll give you the Reader's Digest version of the Beta VHS War. VHS won the war. And we all had those handy yet bulky devices under our TVs. We didn't mind the weight or the whirring and the whizzing noises that it made when playing our brand new VHS copy of our favorite movie we just picked up at the low, low cost of $75. Oh, but wait, there was more. We could record on blank VHS tapes, record from network TV, even from a paid cable channel, only if we could figure out how to schedule a recording. 
Now, don't forget to break off that little piece of plastic to assure no one records over your bootleg copy of Transformers the Movie from 1986. VCRs recorded the history of our lives. Popular TV shows and some of the biggest movies kept us company the same way for years. Sure, the actual tape insertion became more streamlined, but the time of 12 p.m. kept blinking for almost a decade. Even as the VCR became lighter and cheaper over time, it just seemed like this was it. What more was there for the video playback? We had it made. With their place in pop culture, I'm surprised the VCR didn't inspire another Transformer with VHS tape shooting from it. Now that would have been cool. The quintessential video home system had arrived and stayed the course until that fateful day when DVDs finally killed the VHS rental business. The VCR might record your most popular shows, but you might want to record life, events and experiences with family. Vacation and special days became easy to capture with the home video camcorder. Video cameras have a long history. The Super 8 family movie cameras were near and dear to our hearts in the 50s through the 70s, but they didn't record audio, which made for great narration when presenting your vacation films to reluctant family. With relatively short lengths, once you were done recording, you had to send it in for development. Yeah. No instant gratification here, but don't look now, it's 1983, and an over-the-shoulder camera holder was now as mobile as a scuba tank. There goes Suzanne Summers pulled by a blender fish. I think people in the 80s certainly had strong shoulders. We weren't afraid to carry newsman-sized video cameras and entire DJ booths on our back for hours at a time. Hopefully we were switching sides to keep the muscles balanced. Are you ready for this? The video camera recorded audio audio and video on a cassette tape that was included in the camera itself. These tapes were like large size music cassettes, but for visuals as well as sound. You didn't have to be wired to another device like an old TV production. It was all mobile. Everything right there in your hand, or more appropriately, on shoulder. The best win was there was no need to send away for processing. You could watch little Susie's ballet recital immediately upon getting home. The images you recorded were there with synchronized sound on the tape ready to play instantly in the VCR. It was witchcraft and we were all in. And this evolution wouldn't change overnight. They may have become smaller and more streamlined by the 90s, but it was well into that decade that the emergence of digital finally took off. What seemed to be the end all of home video recording would finally be usurped by the digital generation and then things would really begin to move fast. The 110 camera was easy, rectangular and slim, travel sized really. Snap a roll of film in and advance it until it caught. Then, depending on how much you were spending, you had 12 or 24 photos at your disposal. 24, can you imagine? No test photos, no redos or deletions. 24, so you better get it right on the first click. In focus and without a thumb in the shot. Of course, just like the old film movie cameras, you would have to drop it off at the photo mat for developing. Perhaps you needed them quickly and paid for one hour photo when that came available, but most people were good with waiting the less than a week to pick up their prints, and usually two copies, and the negatives came with it. Just in case you wanted more copies of Anne Francis at the Grand Canyon. The real wonder was the built-in flash. Before that, just like real old-time reporters, a separate bulb device snapped in, and when the lights were spent, they were spent. We paid for a flash of light back then, think about that. There were a few minor changes in the short amount of time. The built-in flash and the self-advancing film were a huge success. So were Polaroids. Even Gen X wanted some instant gratification. Sadly, Polaroid trays only held around 10 photos, and the quality was questionable to say the least. The gimmick was the winner here. The low-res picture and its habit of fading made Polaroid a one-trick pony. Albeit one everybody wanted, and it did last a good long time. We eventually got film rolls of 36 pictures, so there is that. Cameras were worn around our wrists, or more stylishly, around our necks, with straps as we could now quickly snap each frame. But there was little on the immediate horizon at this point. This test and adjust period brought us the compact but short-lived disc camera, promising us even faster shutter speeds and picture taking. The film was on a disc, not a roll, but either way, for what felt like decades, we continued to drop off our films at the counter for development, and we liked it. I worked in a photo lab at a local drugstore. It was huge business. And of course, I would never look at your pictures when they were dropped off for pickup. Trust me. Following the trend of VCRs and camcorders, cameras would need to wait until the digital age. And then boom, new tech barely had time to get warm before the mobile phone evolution absorbed their power and purpose to become all in one. But in the 80s, we were content with what the camera had become, and we had time to settle into what looked like the absolute height of photography. It took some time to get there, 
But once the changes began, they didn't look back. I couldn't mention all those day-to-day -day objects that we simply felt couldn't get any better at the time without mentioning the creme de la creme of technology. Marketing with a genius little ditty, we were all enamored with and desperately desired a clapper. <laughs> Clap on and lights and TV would power on or off at will. They were clunky and I'm sure there were a few crossed wires when clapping for lights and the TV turned off or vice versa. But this system to easily provide you power with just a clap of your hand meant no more flicking on the light switches or pressing power on the remote because we all know how time consuming, labor intensive and inconvenient that all is. Am I right? I've got a handful more of everyday things that we in Gen X thought couldn't get any better for my part two. Come back for that next week. But until then, please provide me some items you thought couldn't be beat from that era and maybe I'll include them in the second show. With today's changes happening in fast motion, sometimes the changes are pretty minuscule. Are the improvements all that astounding? There's hardly anything to blow our minds anymore. But maybe you remember the 1970s debut of the Air Popper, which made popping corn, dare I say, a game changer and was the only technological advancement we needed in the gen experience. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the show and are ready to see more. Check out the channel and find great content like this. And please consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you know your views, likes, and comments aid in my success. Thanks again. And until next time.